Jim Quick, thank you so much for being with us. So world-renowned author, expert on brain performance, entrepreneur, you've worked with the likes of Google, Singularity University. I'm a big fan of your work, but what strikes me the most is that you actually had a brain injury as a child, and you've actually transformed your biggest challenge into your greatest asset. Tell us a little, you. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you, wow. Um, so I think our struggles could become strengths, mm -hmm. that going through challenges in our life leads to changes. That there's a quote in my book, Limitless, that says, uh, life is the letter C between the letters B and D, where B stands for birth and D stands for death, but life is choice. Mm -hmm. That these difficult times can uh, diminish us, these difficult times can distract us, or these difficult times can develop us. We ultimately decide. I had a uh, traumatic brain injury when I was five years old, a very bad fall in school, and I had learning challenges, problems focusing and remembering. It took me three years longer to learn how to read. Uh, one of the adults, uh, my teachers, said I was the boy with the broken brain, and so that became my identity. And so I spent the last 30 years trying to be able to, to be able to fix it and be able to help other people uh, get better brains also. So how did you go about that journey? When was the tipping point where you said, you know what, actually I'm going to change this? Yeah, so I, I worked every single day. It was very frustrating when I was a child because every time I was in picked uh, you know, in sports or every time I did badly in class, I would say, oh, because I have the broken brain. But, um, but I poured myself into hope. You know, I really did believe I was very fortunate with my parents uh, who, you know, gave me very discipline and, you know, and gave me encouragement to be able to find, you know, ways. And I, you know, I, and I read books. When I've learned how to read, I would, you know, read books that were inspiring and educational and empowering. And I think that uh, leaders are readers. That if people have seen me on stages or with, uh, you know, certain notable individuals around the world, we bond over books. That, um, you know, I think you read to succeed. And for all of us, I think the commonality between people that are really successful is they are committed to lifelong learning. They learn something new every single day. Absolutely, and one of the best, I was fortunate enough to hear you speak, and one of the best things, or one of the key takeaways I took was that learning is an emotional state, so you have to be in an emotional state to learn and retain this information, which is something I didn't know about learning and having fun at the same time. Can you tell us more? Well, I think a lot of people, if they think about school and sitting in classroom, the emotional feelings that they had was a lot of people, they were confused or they were bored. Mm -hmm. And uh, boredom, you know, on a scale of zero to 10 is probably a zero. But really I found that learning is information times emotion becomes long-term memories and learning. But if the emotion is boredom or zero, anything times zero is zero. And you wonder why you forgot a lot of the things you learned back in grade school. And so my goal with today was helping people to realize that yes, you are, uh, we're not hum human doings, we are human beings, and part of that being is how we feel. Mm -hmm. That there is a, a, a brain and a body connection, that there's a connection between our hearts and our heads, what's going on there. And so I would say to everybody, think about how you can make your learning more uh, enjoyable, more fun, uh, to have greater levels of focus and, and uh, ferocity and or confidence in what you learn. Yeah, and you also talked about the disconnect between learning and emotion. So the idea that people can downgrade their, their goals or their dreams because they don't know how to go about it, you know, that really resonated and touched home for me because I'm definitely guilty of that. And you mentioned the three M's, which is how you can kind of come up come across that. Yeah, I, I think really the three keys to getting what we want in life is really aligning our mindset, our motivation, and the methods we're using. Mm -hmm. So mindset are the attitudes, assumptions we have about money, or attitudes, assumptions we have about relationships, or attitudes, assumptions we have about ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, how, what we believe about ourselves make a big deal. Like you can learn a method on how to read faster, like the things we teach, or learn languages, or give speeches without notes. But if your mindset is, I'm not smart enough, I have a horrible memory, then we're still going to be stuck. But the other part is someone could have a limitless mindset and even know what to do with their methods, but they don't have motivation. Yeah. They don't have purpose. They don't have the energy to do the things that they, you know, they need, that they desire and that they deserve. So I think part of it is tapping into our drive and finding purpose. I think passion is what lights us up. So learning for me gives me passion. Um, and there are lots of things can give somebody passion. And then how do you translate that passion into purpose is how you light other people up. So li learning lights me up, teaching people how to learn lights them up. And that's, my, that's more of my purpose. I love that. Thank you so much for your time. Hi, this is your brain coach, Jim Quick. You're watching DXB today.